So the class was, I like, so in Notre Dame, you're required to take a theology class, and I had to take mm -hmm. my theology class. And I was like a senior, maybe a junior. And uh, no, I was a senior. And um, so I had to take it. And I remember like looking through all of the, every single theology class that was offered. And I was like, what's the easiest theology class? <laughs> And, and so, like, I'm reading the, just like the, they, this is back in the day, right? So they printed out like this, uh, it looked like a phone book. It was like a this skinny phone book with every book. And, and there's this one harp of the spirit. And it's like all about finding your inner self and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's the one. And, and I sign up, I get my buddies Chris and Timmy to sign up with me for this class. And uh, so then the class starts, right? And, and the, the day before the class starts, we get this email and the classroom has been moved and it's no longer in like the main DeBartolo building where every single classroom was. And instead of this other building that I'd never heard of, and I, I, I was a senior, I've been in school a long time, never heard of this building. And it's like, it was literally the band storage building that was in the farthest corner of the entire campus. And it was like a, a warehouse storage room with the <laughs> desks and, I, I, and the room's packed. There's like 60 kids there, a lot of football players. And it was pretty obvious, like when you looked at like the student body in the room, like they all saw what I saw in that, <laughs> in that course description. And Joe Amar walks in. Okay. And this guy, this guy just like, he slaps down this thick syllabus, it was this thick on everybody's desk. And he starts talking about how hard this class is going to be. <laughs> how you're going to have to ever hand in a daily reflection in every class. And the readings were like, you know, super intense. And um, so we're walking home from this class and Chris and Tim are looking at me like, Ted, this is not what you <laughs> sold us. <laughs> like, this, I am dropping this class as soon as I get back to the dorm. And uh, so we got back to the dorm. One of them did drop the class. Timmy stuck in with me. And I was like, he's he's bluffing guys this guy is full of baloney <laughs> and so sure enough the day before the, you know third it was tuesday so thursday was the next day of the class we get an email like an hour before the class is supposed to start and the email says class has been moved and the the new room is like a room in debartolo where all of the rooms should be wow. and so we go to debartolo we go to this room and there's like there are not 60 people in this room there are now 15 people in this room <laughs> everybody has dropped the class <laughs> Right. Dude, I didn't know that part. This, this, this is the best part of the story. So so I'm in there, and I'm like with Tim, and Tim's like, yeah, man, we should have been like Chris and dropped the class. I'm like, no, this guy's bluffing. And uh, Joe Amar walks in like three minutes late into this classroom, and he walks up. He immediately, and I think he's pissed. Maybe he's mad everybody dropped his class. I don't know. And he doesn't say anything. And he just like walks over to the windows and he starts closing the window shades and he turns off the lights and then he just sits on a, at his desk. Doesn't say anything for 20 minutes. And everybody's just like, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> says anything for 20 minutes. Maybe, I don't know. And uh, then after 20 minutes, he kind of looks up and he goes, that was awkward. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and he goes, he goes, how weird is it that we can't just sit in a room for 20 minutes yes. in silence without feeling awkward? <laughs> We're going to do this at the beginning of every single class. Oh, wow. Silence. I love that guy. And, um, and then he goes, who did the, the, the writing assignment? Everybody like hands in their writing assignment. He, he tears them all up immediately. He goes, going forward, your daily reflections will be handwritten and they will not be longer than one page. And um, uh, every day started with 20 minutes of breathing. He eventually it evolved into breathing exercises and explaining what meditation is. Um, and a lot of it was, he was a Syriac Catholic priest. I didn't even know what that meant, but the whole idea that like, he, I was unaware that as a Roman Catholic, I have this very specific view of things and that's not all of Catholicism. It's certainly not all Christianity and actually very not what Jesus was all about. And so uh, learned a lot about Middle Eastern thinking and philosophy and how they tell stories and what all that meant. Um, the Desert Fathers. Geez. The Desert Fathers, a lot of stuff like that. Um, but the, be the best part of it was, he pointed out, he goes, as Americans, you have this need to be busy all of the time. There's three parts of the body. There's the mind, the body, and the spirit. You guys are really good at taking care of the mind. You're all here at Notre Dame taking classes, reading stuff. You, you make time to read books. 
you, you make time to go to the gym to take care of your body. And you know that requires time every day and effort. You take no time for the spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, if you walk across the quad on your way home today and you see somebody your age just sitting on a bench, and if they're not reading a book or talking to somebody, you think they're lazy. You're like, what is this guy just sitting there on a bench on a Tuesday? And um, Joe Amar's point is like sitting on a bench for 20 minutes is like the most important thing we can do. And we need to stop crowding our lives with listening to, you know, and you think about, have you ever been like on a line at a grocery store and you feel like awkward if you're not staring at your phone? Like yeah. I'm just gonna be a guy just standing there. That feels weird. And uh, anyway, jump in. But I think that's why we feel so restless and anxious and it was, stressed because we don't take the, the time. The last point he made, uh, and this is, this is good anecdote, yeah. but to that point, um, uh, his, his biggest point was the cruelest thing we do to people is put them in solitary confinement. And he goes, well, why does that make any sense? Like, it shouldn't be that bad to be by yourself. Um, and uh, uh, that's because we haven't conditioned ourselves to do it. And that is the hardest, scariest thing about our true self is to accept who we really are and be alone with God. And uh, so he tells this story about um, some guy wanted to study a monk and he went out to this monastery in Egypt and he was hanging out with these, these, these monks in this monastery. And uh, after a couple of weeks, he found out that um, uh, he was like, the, the monastery wasn't doing it for him. And he found out that there were these hermits that lived out in the desert, like totally by themselves. And so he goes to the abbot of the monastery and he's like, um, is there any chance I could go visit one of the hermits? I want to learn from them. And uh, the, the, the abbot is like, okay, uh, you know, on Friday we bring them bread. I'll bring you out. You can hang out with a guy for an hour. So they bring him out and he goes to visit this hermit. And the hermit's got like nothing. There's a lean to and that's it in the middle of the desert. And the, the monks drop him off and they go to the other guys and they're going to pick him up in an hour. And so uh, the, the, the hermit is like, oh, I'm so sorry. I used to have a chair, but I, I had to get rid of it. It was too much of a distraction. And uh, <laughs> the guy's like, and, and the, the hermit was an American who was now living in Egypt. And, and the guy's like, how long have you been out here in the desert? And the guy's like, I've been out here for eight years and I've been in the monastery for, for like 20. And uh, the, the guy's like, so you're telling me that it takes eight years by yourself in the desert to find God. And the hermit just starts cracking up, laughing hysterically, like rolling on the ground, cannot control himself. It takes him like five to 10 minutes to recover his composure to answer this guy's question. Finally, he says, I can show you God in Times Square. I can show you God absolutely anywhere. Finding God is the easiest thing to do. I've been in the desert for eight years trying to find myself. Oh, wow. And that was pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. but anyway, Harp of the Spirit, Joe Amar. He's so great. He's no longer living, right? Yeah, he passed away, I think. I, I actually think, I, I don't know that he never shared the details. Um, he did share that the only reason he taught that class was like a one-time thing. And I believe that it was because he had just received a terminal diagnosis. And he was like, this is... The last class. Yeah. Of the and, and then, frankly, after we had the class, he even said at the end of it, he's like, you could never teach this class again because you guys are going to go tell everybody about oh, it. That's oh. and, and you kind of would have that same problem that he had the first day. Um, but, like, mm -hmm. we should be teaching our kids this. Like, our kids, like, starting as a child... Yeah, it's good to. Good morning, to everybody. I'll let the. Thank you so but much, yeah. Dad. Um, yeah, thanks. Just gotta feed Lucy. Um, yeah, I just think it's it's so beautiful. Maybe it's an American thing. Is it an American that we just don't know I how think to? It's, I think it's something that everybody's touched on that we need to quiet ourselves and yeah. reflect and pray and. Oh, that's so great, Dana. Everybody loves Ted. We need to bring him back with you, Kristen. You need to yeah. share yeah. more stories. Yes, we love Ted. Ted is a good storyteller. And he's 